Assistant Professor, Dr. Engineer Filomeno Arsenio Marchena. I am the chairholder of the UNESCO Chair of Sustainable Water Technology and Management at the University of Curaçao, Dr. Moises da Costa Gomez. And we gave him the section addressing the shortage and quality of water from the course Water Security and the Sustainable Development Goals. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this introductory lecture regarding seawater desalination to address shortage and quality water which is important for freshwater assurance, especially in arid small island developed states with practically no natural freshwater resources. In this lecture, I will discuss briefly, without going into mathematical or physical chemical details, the three main desalination technologies, the encountered problems, their solution, and the condition of drinking water based on the practical experiences in Aruba, a small island located as indicated in these pictures, approximately 20 miles off the coast of Venezuela. Aruba has a yearly average rainfall of 400 millimeters, and in the rainy season, as these pictures show, rainwater may sometimes be in abundance, but practically all the rainwater flows in a very short period of time through the ephemeral streams to the sea. Surface water retention and groundwater infiltration are rather limited due to the geological structure of the island and the absence of adequate rainwater harvesting infrastructures. With the establishment of the oil refinery in 1929, increasing the island's economy and consequently an immense population growth, the emerging freshwater shortage was addressed with the application of seawater desalination since 1932. The applied technologies are multi-effect distillation, multi-stage flash evaporation, and the seawater reverse of Moses. The multi-effect distillation process, as shown in the schematic flow diagram, is a combination of effects. Single-stage evaporators operating at successively lower pressure and boiling temperature than the preceding ones. The pressure difference in the effects is maintained by steam ejectors. In the first effect, the preheated seawater is evaporated by condensing saturated low-pressure steam from a boiler. The produced vapor in the first effect is used to evaporate the brine flow in the second effect and to preheat the incoming seawater feed. The same process is repeated in the following effects and evaporation can continue until there is enough temperature difference between the condensing vapor and the evaporating brine. In the last effect, the produced vapors are condensed by the cooling seawater, of which a part is used as the seawater feed, and the rest is rejected to the sea. Demisters separate seawater droplets drained by the vapor to improve distillate quality. The condensed vapors are collected as distillate, and the non-evaporated brine in the last effect is discharged to the sea. The multi-stage flashing technology is based on the thermodynamic principle that a liquid at boiling temperature can be evaporated effectively through pressure reduction. As indicated in this schematic flow diagram, the MSF evaporator with brine recirculation is a configuration of flashing stages in series at succeeding lower pressure and the recirculation brine from one stage flow to the next stage where the flashing process is repeated. Pressure difference in the stages is maintained by a steam ejector system. This MSF concept has three main sections, the heat input, the heat recovery, and the heat rejection section. In the heat rejection section, cooling seawater condenses the vapor produced in the last stages. A part of the cooling seawater is used as makeup water, which is degassed and deaerated to remove corrosive and non-condensable gases, and then mixed with the recirculation brine flow after a portion is rejected to the sea. In the heat recovery section, the fresh recirculating brine is preheated by condensing vapors of the flashing stages and then enters the heat input section where it is heated by condensing low pressure steam up to a temperature of 110 degrees. After the heat input section, the recirculation brine flow is flashed in the successive stages where entrained seawater droplets in the vapor are removed by the misters. High temperature chemical additive are those to inhibit foaming and scaling. The condensed vapors are collected in troughs as pure destiny. 
In seawater reverse osmosis, fresh water is separated from pressurized seawater through a semi-permeable membrane. This is the opposite of osmosis, a natural process where water flows spontaneously through a semi-permeable membrane from a dilute solution to a more concentrated solution as seawater, until equilibrium is reached at a hydrostatic pressure difference over the membrane, as illustrated in this picture. Now, by applying a pressure higher than this osmotic pressure, a net pressure flow takes place in the reverse direction through the membrane, so desalinating the seawater. As indicated in this schematic flow diagram, the seawater row consists basically of five components, the seawater pretreatment, the high pressure pumps, the membrane separation unit, the energy recovery device, and the post-treatment of the product water. Seawater membranes are very prone to fouling and scaling, and to prevent this, the seawater feed is filtered in the pretreatment section with fine sands and multimedia filters and with catchment filters to remove all kinds of particles. Biofouling is inhibited with disinfectants on continuous or intermittent basis. The high pressure pumps deliver the required working pressure up to 65 bar for the membrane separation unit depending on the salinity of seawater. This consists of pressure vessels where the membrane are placed that separates the seawater feed in a freshwater flow and in a concentrate brine flow called permeate and concentrate. Depending on the concentration of the seawater, the membranes used and pressure applied, up to 55% of the seawater feed can be recovered as product water. In the post-treatment, the product water is remineralized to make it suitable for drinking and to make it non-corrosive for the water distribution system. In the energy recovery section, the pressure exchange in combination with the booster pump uses the concentrate flow with a pressure of one to four bar lower than the membrane feed water to bring a part of the filter seawater feed up to the working pressure, after which the concentrates are rejected at practically ambient pressure. This energy recovery system has drastically reduced the energy consumption of the seawater RO. To conclude this section, the energy consumption of the three desalination technologies is shown in this table. And as can be seen, the seawater row is about 70% more efficient than the thermal evaporators. Most operational problems hampering stable and efficient seawater desalination are thermodynamically and physicochemical complex processes. In this section, I will give a basic explanation of the most frequently occurring problems such as corrosion and erosion, excessive foaming, scaling, fouling, and the applied technical solution. Seawater environment and pure distillate, particularly due to its acidity, are very corrosive, making maintenance and material selection a very important aspect in seawater desalination. The main internal problems encountered in evaporated stages are corrosion and perforation of the carbon steel, as shown in these pictures. Additionally, the corrosive non-condensable oxygen and carbon dioxide gases emerging from the condensing vapors also cause severe corrosion in the venting system. Stainless steel lining in these compartments improve design of the venting system and the aeration of the seawater feed with major solution in preventing vent site corrosion. Flow-induced erosion and corrosion at the brine tube inlets were solved by operated plant designs reducing brine velocities and by installation of resistant polymeric tube inserts. Excessive foaming, as indicated in these pictures, is inherent to seawater and the flashing process, where spontaneously formed vapor bubbles are enhanced and stabilized by natural surface active components in seawater. This foaming tendency of the recirculation brine hampers stable ev evaporation and causes vapor entrainment of seawater droplets, which diminishes distillate quality. Dosing of an effective anti foam additive, such as ethylene oxide, propylene oxide block copolymer, is necessary to con control excessive foaming. It destabilizes foam by removal of surface active components from the interfacial layer, facilitating liquid drainage of the double layer. This leads to thinning and rupture of the foam bubbles as schematically indicated in these pictures. 
However, monitoring is very crucial because under and overdosing of the antifoam can cause increased product salinity and production decay. Excess foaming molecules may stabilize internal foams as illustrated in this picture. Subsequently, this results in a two-phase recirculating brine flow reducing heat transfer and pumping capacity. Scaling of heat transfer surfaces due to thermal decomposition of bicarbonates in seawater is also a major problem. At temperatures lower than 82 degrees Celsius, calcium carbonate, and at temperature higher than 93 degrees Celsius, magnesium hydroxide precipitates, decreasing efficiency, and once a layer is formed, precipitation can continue until the whole tube is blocked. Fortunately, these alkaline scales can be removed with acidic additives. However, at 110 degrees Celsius, the insoluble calcium sulfate scale can be formed on brining the tubes, which is difficult to remove. As indicated in this table, in Aruba, many scale removal techniques have been applied during the years, from removal with hammer and chisel, application of the first worldwide effective ferric chloride to concentrate the sulfuric acid, which was replaced in 2007 by a novel high temperature anti-scaling based on the polymeric phosphonate chemistry. As shown in this picture, concentrated sulfuric acid is very corrosive and a potential health and safety hazard. In the following pictures, the condition of the brine heater is illustrated after eight months continuous operation on concentrated sulfuric acid, showing still some scaling and on the new anti-scaling with very clean tubes. Heavy biofouling was also experienced in the seawater intake system of the evaporators, especially barnacles, regularly obstructed cooling water seawater flow through the condenser as shown in these pictures. Condenser cleaning occurred every three months. In addition, marine biofilms attached to the tube surfaces reduce heat transfer and may create locally oxygen depletion at anaerobic condition under a biofilm, creating a difference in electrical potential and induced microbiological corrosion. A novel non-oxidizing biocide containing catenary amines was applied to successfully control biofouling. These cationic surfactants are very effective because they cannot be sensed by microorganisms, as is the case with chlorine additives. As indicated in these pictures, Condensers and seawater cooling pipes stayed very clean after more than a year in continuous operation with this biocide. In seawater reverse osmosis, fouling of membranes can be severe and leading to permanent damage in a very short period of time. Membranes can be fouled by precipitation of inorganic salts, organic fouling, colloidal fouling, and biofouling. Precipitation of inorganic salts by exceeding the solubility limits occurs mainly due to concentration polarization, which is inherent to the water diffusion to the membrane following the convective mass transfer from the bulk to the membrane surface and back diffusion from the boundary layer toward the liquid bulk, as schematically illustrated in this figure. Organic fouling is absorption of organic molecules, such as dissolved humic acid, which are unable to diffuse through the membrane or redissolve into the feed bulk solution. Colloidal falling involves coating of the membrane surface by particles that cannot pass through the membrane, such as clay, silk, colloidal silica, and particulates attracted by undissolved organic matter. Physical chemical falling also attach microorganisms leading to severe biofouling, which is a serious problem for all reverse osmosis system as biofilm quickly forms on all surfaces exposed to almost any feed water. Severe membrane fouling is also experienced in Aruba as illustrated in these pictures. Osmotic membrane cleaning with a high concentrated salt solution and extensive sanitation with hypochlorite and bromohydantium solution was successfully applied resulting in increased production and energy efficiency above the design values as shown in this graph. Thermal and membrane desalination units produce potable water of very high quality. However, it is corrosive to practically all components that comprise the water distribution system. In addition, undesirable corrosion projects 
such as red iron oxide, are released into the drinking water. The methods available for controlling corrosion in potable water systems are very limited due to the requirement that any material added to the water must be certified as safe for human consumption and should not affect the taste of the water. In this section, I will elaborate briefly on the conditioning of drinking water as applied in Aruba. Since 1932 until 1990s, the distillates have been cascaded over a bed of natural fossilized coral stones as illustrated in these pictures. And sodium hexamate of phosphate was used as a corrosion inhibitor. From the late 1980s until 1990, the community of Ruba had experienced brown water problem throughout the island due to corrosion in the distribution system with the iron concentration far beyond World Health Organization standards. In 1990, the sodium hexamate phosphate was replaced with a new treatment program consisting of low levels of both pyrophosphate and zinc orthophosphate, which successfully cleaned up the system, eliminated the brown water complaints. Occasionally, also blue water occurrence has been observed in the distribution system caused by corrosion in smaller copper distribution lines. As illustrated in these pictures, corrosion is simply an electrochemical reaction of the refined metal with its environment that returns the metal to its natural oxidized state, essentially a battery with four basic elements, the anode where the metal gives up electrons and dissolves in the solution, the cathode where the electrons given up are released to the solution, the base metal, which acts as a conductor for electrons, and the ele electrolyte water solution, where the flow of ions complete the circuit. The mechanism of copper pitting corrosion is, however, very complex. Different oxidation and reduction reactions take place, forming different copper oxides and salt, as is schematically illustrated in this picture. The application of the pyro orthophosphate corrosion inhibition program in Aruba has effectively mitigated corrosion and corrosion-induced perforation in the water distribution system. The iron concentration is since the 1990s far below the World Health Organization target of 0.3 parts per million, and water losses are reduced to very low levels of 2.6 to 4.7 percent non-revenue water. To conclude this introductory lecture, I would like to state that the application of seawater desalination and resolving most of the encountered operation problem was a successful solution to guarantee freshwater soaring in the arid island of Aruba. However, the cost of the produced drinking water is still very high, and the concentrated brine discharge is a potential contamination of the coastal marine ecosystem. Nowadays, our biggest challenge in Aruba is the development of a sustainable integrated water cycle management based on ecological engineering and the circular blue economy to guarantee water and food security. In this context, rainwater harvesting infrastructures for surface water collection and groundwater infiltration and reuse of treated wastewater is of utmost importance to guarantee irrigation water security for the development of green agriculture and protection of our mangroves, and reducing the impact of land-based contamination of the coastal marine ecosystem. In Aruba, still many useful surface water is unnecessarily lost in the rainy seasons, as indicated in these pictures. And at last, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your attention for this introductory lecture addressing shortage and quality of water. Thank mm -hmm. you.